Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Tactical Talks. So in this episode, I wanted to show you guys, I've talked about this gun and I've showed you guys kind of quick little previews in some of my other videos, but we haven't actually talked about what I have going on with my latest build. So this is a Polymer 80 build. Um, I don't remember the number on it. It's the Glock 19 slash Glock 23, whichever caliber you want it to be. Um, that's That's the... The one that this is so this one already comes stippled and everything so what i want to do is just do a quick little kind of parts breakdown what i have on it so far and what the plans are for the future um my glock 17 that you guys have seen it's my it's what i call my uh, my rolling special or my version of the rolling special it's got the light it's got the red dot it's got all this stuff uh over some time i've had a little bit of issues with that gun it just doesn't want to cycle after uh you know so many rounds i'll go to the range it'll fire but just fine for a while and then after a while i'll get a couple jams little issues like that everything i was looking at i did a little bit of research um upgraded the gun a little bit changed a few things changed some components out and one of the biggest things i was looking at was the red dot that's on that is a vortex viper that is eventually going to go to this gun isn't milled into the slide so it's got a plate that slides into the dovetail, adding weight to the back of the gun, which I didn't think was a huge deal, but the version that I got, not only does it add that weight, it's got built-in iron sights, which is an awesome feature, but everything that I've been looking at is kind of pointing towards that being the cause of why the gun isn't cycling the way it's supposed to cycle. So I still love that gun. We're going to put different sights onto that, and then the slide that we're going to be ordering for this is going to be milled out so that I could put the Vortex Viper onto this gun because I'm probably going to be carrying this one more than I am that Glock 17. Um, I have plans for that Glock 17 and I'll get to that here in a little while. So kind of first off, I was going to do a little more in-depth of how this came along and everything, but those of you who know anything about, I don't like necessarily like to call this a gun channel, but there, YouTube is very strict on this, the things that we put on here. Now, they don't like us putting links to, to gun parts and stuff like that down in the description. And they also don't like, or they don't allow, for you to put any videos showing you how to build or manufacture any type of firearm. So because this is a Polymer 80, obviously it wasn't complete. It was only 80% done. So I had to do some milling up here on the top and some drilling into the frame. There's plenty of videos that are still on YouTube about that so if you guys are interested in that go ahead and check those out but i didn't want to put that on my channel because when it comes time to monetize my channel i didn't want that to be an issue and have a strike against me and end up getting in trouble with youtube later on down the line so that's why i didn't show the build the build series as far as this goes but like i said there's plenty of other videos to check it out you'll see how i did it i just used a dremel and a little hand drill it took me, I think maybe an hour and 20 minutes total, kind of just taking my time, ensuring I didn't do anything that I wasn't supposed to, watching other videos to make sure that, you know, I was doing what everybody else was doing. And like I said, we may still have to do a little fine tuning after I get the slide. That's a lot of the videos that I've been looking at are showing that once they get the slide on there, of course, not everything is built exactly the same, even though they're interchangeable parts. Um, there's a little bit of sanding and tuning and all these other little things that you have to do to ensure that everything works correctly. So without further ado, like I said, here is the first half of the gun. So kind of what we have into it, obviously, is the frame that you get. All the internals on this are from other Glocks that I have that I've upgraded. So as far as the internals are concerned... Everything is from an OEM Glock with the exception of a three pound ghost connector for the trigger in the back. Now the trigger, for those of you who know, obviously it looks a little bit different. I don't know if you can see that. All that is, is the Vickers Tactical Trigger Shoe. So the trigger bar, trigger spring, everything inside of there is still the same. That's just a different trigger shoe. You can get those online for $30 to $40. You can get them fairly cheap. Only because the trigger that I put on here had the ridges and everything on it. And it doesn't necessarily hurt my finger, 
but this flat faced Vickers uh, shoe is just a lot more comfortable. I eventually planned on doing an apex trigger and all that, but I'm going to try this out. This is the first time I've used the Vickers um, trigger shoe. So once this is all complete, I'm going to try it out, see how I like it. I'm just a huge fan of flat face triggers. Um, down here at the bottom, this is the, uh, I don't remember the exact name of this, but this is the polymer magwell that I got from the Glock store. Again, about $30, $35. Fairly inexpensive. I didn't want anything too crazy, too big, too flared out. I like the look of it, and it adds some function. Now, this isn't going to be, you know, a racing magwell. This isn't going to give you, you know, that, that much of an advantage. You still got to get, you know, close enough. But it does add a little bit of uh, reliability as well as convenience as far as putting that magazine in there just a little bit quicker the next thing if i turn this sideways you can see how big this is right here that is the zev technologies gen 3 mag release very big very easy to find that's one thing that i found on my guns is i'm really really liking you know putting extended mag releases on there Again, like I said, very easy to find, very functional. I like the texturing on it. It's just very, very nice as far as I'm concerned. The next thing I did, obviously, the uh, Surefire X300. I got this used online. If you guys can't tell, I mean, there is a little bit of money into this. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not huge into spending all the money that I have. I'm not a rich person. I don't claim to be. I'm showing you guys, or at least I want to try to show you guys, that you can build some of these guns that you see on TV or you see in these YouTube videos, and you don't have to pay all the you know the amounts of money that some of these people are paying. If you look around enough, you know you know what sites to go to, discounts, all that kind of deal. You can find some pretty good deals. So this was actually an eBay buy. Nothing wrong with it. Very nice, very clean, clear. It was just a guy on eBay got it. I guess. If I remember correctly, I think he'd gotten it as a gift or something. This is not the light that he wanted because he didn't like how far it stuck out past um, his pistol. Now, obviously, this is where my slide is going to end, so it is going to stick out. But I'll get to why I'm okay with having that on there. The next thing is I ordered these ETS magazines. This is the first time that I'm actually using these ETS magazines. So we'll see how I like these. I like the idea behind them. As far as them, you know, being translucent, I can see how many rounds I have. I'm not having to worry about just the little holes in the back. Everything that I've looked at, all the research that I've done shows that these are very reliable magazines. I've just never run them myself. And then this base plate down here is a plus three Terran Tactical style, not Terran Tactical branded, but the Terran Tactical style um, base plate. Does the same exact thing as all my other Terran Tactical ones. I've compared these to the Terran Tactical ones that I do have. I don't see a difference. The only difference that I see is that it's not branded with the Terran Tactical logo. So once we get this thing up and running, we start firing it. Then we'll see if this causes any kind of difference. If the magazines are any different. I have some of these magazines without the base plates. And then of course this one with the base plate. So that I can do different testing and see if it's the magazine that's causing an issue if there's an issue or if it's that base plate down at the bottom so as far as that's concerned that's kind of where we're sitting so far i do plan on doing an extended takedown i don't know maybe a extended slide catch these are just the parts that i had sitting around for now so i wanted to go ahead and put that together now the slide that i'm looking at for this as you can tell i'm not really going with big name brands on the gun i'm not looking for you know i'm not looking at for it to be one of those like look look at all these expensive parts i have on it i want it more for function and you know something i can go out and play with this isn't something i'm going to be carrying on me every single day but if i like it it's a nice range gun i may end up carrying it a little bit more often um maybe more than the glock 43 that i carry now this slide that i'm looking at already has window cuts in it um it's got the rmr cut in it it comes fully assembled with mil spec parts and it also comes with a threaded barrel now again they're not big name brand parts they're just functional 
you know, parts that, you, that I'm going to be able to use. I plan on doing the Vortex Viper on top of the slide where it's already milled out. Um, suppressor height sights. And then doing the, I think it's the agency arms, the compensator. I think it's the 417 if, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to do that compensator on the front. So when I talk about this light sticking out, that compensator is going to kick out almost flush, if not maybe a little bit past it. So I'm not necessarily too concerned with the light sticking out that much further. This is going to be comparable to the size of a Glock 17, but I just wanted to do a Glock 19 build. I don't have a Glock 19. So that's kind of what we're looking at for that gun. Once I get those parts in, it's going to be a process. Like I said, I don't have all the money in the world, but once I get those parts in, that's that. Again, I've showed you guys that gun. I didn't really talk about the parts I have on it what I'm going with and why I'm going with those parts. Like I said, a fairly inexpensive build. I'll give you guys a price breakdown once this thing is fully assembled, but I wanted this to be part one of what we have so far. Um, the Glock 17 that I do have, I've looked at a bunch of videos online. I've watched a bunch of different things. I have my Sub 2000, I have AR pistols, I have smaller um, carbine style weapons. I don't have a 9mm version, so what I'm thinking about doing is getting a Micro Aroni or one of these companies that's similar you know, to the Micro Aroni where I can put the Glock 17 inside of it, extend that barrel, increase accuracy, velocity, that kind of stuff, my points of contact, and we'll get into all that stuff a little bit later, but the plan is to turn that into a dedicated you know, pistol style carbine. So that's the plan with the Glock 17. I'm going to kind of take it all apart. Um, change some things up and then hopefully go that route with it so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video like i said fairly short kind of brief to the point i wanted to show you guys what i had going on like i said i haven't been able to exactly show you me building this thing but i figure we'll do a part one once all the parts come in and we get it all fully assembled we'll do a part two we can do first impressions we'll do range days with it all that kind of stuff and i'll let you guys know how the parts are functioning if I like it or if we're going to change anything up. The last thing that I wanted to do for this video was give a shout out to my buddy Levi. Um, I'm going to leave him a link down in the description. I've talked about him a million times before and I'm going to keep talking about him. Great, great product, man. If you guys need a holster, you want a Kydex holster, click the link down in the description. Concho Valley Custom Kydex. He makes some amazing, amazing holsters. Once this is done, that's the plan. He's going to hook me up. Um, with a holster for this thing once it's fully assembled because this is like I said a custom build I can't just go online and order a holster for that exact gun with you know the exact um, accessories or whatever you want to call them parts that I put on this gun so he's who I'm going to go to for that but the reason I wanted to give him a big shout out one he's a huge supporter of my channel two great great products but three is he's a supporter of mine down on Patreon so if you guys want to check out my Patreon page, go ahead and click the link down in the description. This month, he was our Patreon MVP of the month. Um, as far as Patreon's concerned, they don't like doing giveaways, all this stuff. So I do the giveaways on YouTube, shoutouts on YouTube, on Patreon. You are my MVP. So he's going to be getting hooked up with a pair of these Wiley X sunglasses. Um, everything is still in the bag. They're still brand new. I don't know the model number on them, but... Very, very good sunglasses. I used these when I was in the military. I had somebody send these out to me. They got the clear lenses in them, and then they have the shaded lenses if you want to wear them as sunglasses. Padding on the inside. Um, it comes with the cleaning cloth. It comes with the little string on here, the little piece to put in the back so you don't lose them. And then, of course, comes with this little carrying case that you can slide over your belt if you wanted to put them on there. Very easy to carry. These things, I believe, are like a $70 or $75 value. If you go online and buy them brand new, which obviously these are still brand new. They're still in the packaging. But that was just my way of saying thank you. Thanks for checking out everything I do. Thanks for supporting my channel. If you guys want to be part of the monthly giveaway on Patreon, click the link down in the description. Go to the Patreon page and it explains everything on there to become my MVP of the month. And then like I said, every month I give away something a little bit different as a thank you to you guys for helping me out and supporting this channel. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, any ideas of what you think I should do with this pistol, Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think um, as far as the build so far. And then, like I said, if you have any suggestions, comment that down, uh, down below as well. 
If you guys aren't subscribed, consider subscribing. I do monthly giveaways as far as my Patreon page. I got a big thousand subscriber giveaway coming up. I do weekly videos, obviously these tactical talk videos, and then vlogs throughout the week so you guys see what I have going on in my life. So again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.